we've lost two. We're facing some adversity, but we're not we're not hitting the panic button. Um, you know, offensively, we're not very good, uh, and right now we're not playing good football, and it starts with me. So, uh, you know, we all need to to look in the mirror, and like I said, it starts with me, and and, and understand that that we all need to be better. Everybody, I'm Missy Matthews. Welcome to the Extra Point presented by Microsoft Surface. That was quarterback Ben Roethlisberger following the Steelers' second loss in a row this season. The Steelers now at 11-2. and two, Clinched a playoff spot but lost to the Bills on Sunday night football. Let me introduce you to our panel today to break it all down. Merrill Hodge is back once again. Bob Labriola, hopefully these two uh, get along. And also Arthur Motes, former Steelers outside linebacker. And guys, a 26 to 15 loss. We saw the Chiefs win prior in the day over the Miami Dolphins. So just looking big picture now at the AFC playoff picture as we are heading into the final few games here of the regular season and the Steelers really not doing themselves any favors. So when you look at it, that's uh, not a pretty picture and the Steelers had control of things. And as we've said the past two weeks, just not falling their way. The Chiefs currently sitting in the one seed, the Steelers at two, the Bills right behind them at 10 and three. And then of course the Ravens and the Browns play tonight. That could change what we are looking at here on the full screen. So just the Steelers and the Chiefs clinching a playoff spot at this point. So let's talk about what is going wrong. And we are going to start with the Steelers offense. So Merrill, for you, what's happening? A lot of injuries on the O-line last night, but it just does not seem like the fluidity that they kept talking about, the things they wanted to change, changed last night. Well, I think there's, you know, if we look at the, the one area that they got better at, okay, that we have to do acknowledge is their ability to run the football. They got a little better there. Now, I can promise you this. If you run it 17 times with three different backs, nobody's going to get in any rhythm. It is as hard as a run. I can speak from personal experience. Regardless of getting it seven, eight, or nine times through four, uh, four quarters, it's hard to get into any type of rhythm. However, they did a better job up front. So they're starting in the right direction or going in the right direction there. Their biggest problem right now that exists with their offense is there's absolutely no explosiveness in it. There is no, uh, and, and I'm telling you this from, to win in the National Football League, you got to take three, two to four shots a game and capitalize on one to two of them or two to four of them. And they had none of that. Um, in fact, the Cincinnati game in week 10 when they had it, they had several explosive plays. Like if you look at that offense in week 10 versus where they are last, uh, last night, they almost like completely different offenses, to be honest with you. So they have to get that phase into their offense and keep building on their running game um, and get it going early because you only have a few weeks left before you're in the in the playoffs, and that is when you want to play your best football. It is clearly not now, but you are now in the window where you better start playing your best football or you're going to be one and done. Arthur, does it feel like the Steelers' offense is too predictable? We heard the Washington football team, their defensive players, saying, you know, we saw what Baltimore exposed. We were ready for them. Did it feel that way as well last night? Um, at times it did. At times we knew the short passing attack was going to be their go-to. But to me, that still isn't the part that makes me a little bit more concerned. For me, I'm more so just waiting to hear the injury reports with uh, Matt Filer and Kevin Dotson. Both of those guys going down with uh, pec injuries. Uh, to me was a little bit more concerning because we saw glimpses of the running game starting to improve. Obviously, when Dotson came in there, the physical nature that he plays with. But when you talk about losing two uh, starting caliber players in one game, to me, now I'm starting to look at the depth of the offensive line and see it getting pretty thin. So that, to me, is the part that has to get addressed. Uh, and hopefully these are guys that are going to be returning sooner rather than later. Labs, we saw some issues once again with drops. There's a number of things that you could pinpoint that went wrong with the Steelers offense. What was the most egregious one to you after watching the game last night? Well, I mean, you know, you mentioned the drop, so I'll just start there. Deontay Johnson dropped the ball in the first offensive series. I mean, and so it's, it's you know, the, the, the whole concept of fixing things, you know, I think is – um, I, I don't know, a misnomer. Uh, you know, Merrill mentioned the Steelers were a little bit better running the football. Uh, okay, um, I, I won't argue with him about that, but I think he would agree that it's still not good enough. And so, you know, incremental improvement from awful to just poor uh, isn't going to get it done. And I'm not criticizing Merrill's assessment as much as I'm trying to take a brutally hard look 
at what's actually happening. Uh, and if, and if I, I had to pick something that disturbs me the most, I would have to agree with Arthur Motes. You know, two more injuries to offensive linemen. Um, you know, you're reaching critical mass here with capable bodies, um, you know, who can, who can play winning NFL football against the kinds of teams that the Steelers are going to be seeing uh, the last couple of games in the regular season as well as in the postseason. And, you know, there's nothing, you know, next man up and the standard is the standard. Those are nice catchphrases. And that's what coaches should tell their players and all that stuff. But, you know, you have to be realistic about it, too. Once you get past, um, if let's just pretend Kevin Dodson and Matt Filer cannot play for a month. Okay, the players that you would get to fill in for them, you cannot honestly expect them to play to the level of the people that they're replacing. Merrill, do you want to respond to that? Oh my gosh, do we have enough time? <laughs> yes, we do. I mean, that's what. If, see, here's Lab doesn't listen. What I said in the very beginning is they improved. I didn't say they are where they need to be. I said they improved. <laughs> I then mentioned you cannot get any consistency when you have 17 rushes and three backs are splitting in those 17 carries. So they're not where they're going to. They need to be, but they did get better than the previous week against Washington. They did do that, but I will say this. Are they where they need to be when they, if they're going to win the Super Bowl? No, they're, they've still got work to do, but they're going in the right direction. Arthur, do you feel like it's time to panic? I know that's one of those hot uh, topic buttons and things that people <laughs> like to say at this point. It's two losses, but it just feels like the Steelers are trending in the wrong direction of what we've seen from them so far. Yeah, to me, um, in terms of panicking, I, I, I don't know. I don't personally feel you need to panic because We've addressed in terms of identifying what needs to happen to improve the running game. We've spoken on those things multiple times between me, you, Merrill, obviously labs as well. Now it's more so when are they going to start to implement it? And to me, that's the, the bigger concern. So it's less about panicking in terms of thinking that we can't fix it. And it's more so just, OK, how long is it going to take for us to implement some of these things? How long is it going to take for us to say, all right, well, we need to get these guys into a better rhythm running the ball or all right, this is the group of, that we're going to have up front for the next couple of weeks. OK, how long is it going to take for them to get to the level that we need the met so that way that can increase uh, so we can improve the running game? But still not panic, because like I said, everything we need to fix it is still in house. And that is a good feeling. All right, it feels like the last three weeks have been very jumbled with all the schedule changing changes. The good news for the Steelers this week as they are not playing until Monday night. We'll learn much more about those injuries tomorrow when Coach Tomlin talks, but also some extra time for players to heal with the bumps and bruises, as Coach likes to call it. All right, we're going to take a break here on the extra point. When we return, we'll talk about the Steelers defense and Josh Allen. We'll be right back. You know, a good quarterback like that that's having an MVP caliber year, man, it's going to be tough to hold him down for 60 minutes. Um, he figured some things out and was able, able to find some rhythm, rhythm and it made, uh, it made it tougher sledding for us. We still had our opportunity to make plays. Uh, he and they just made more than we did. All right, time to talk some Steelers defense here on the Extra Point presented by Microsoft Surface. There you heard Coach Tomlin talking about Josh Allen. So, Merrill, I want to start with you. What was the biggest adjustments or changes you saw in terms of Josh Allen first half compared to the second half? Well, you know what? I, I think they started to take advantage of um, the Steelers' size and speed where they didn't do that in the first half. Because I'll tell you this, the Steelers' defense looked completely different than it has looked in previous weeks. When you look at all the different numbers and all the speed that actually exists on the field, you're not as big uh, as, as they once were. You know, you use a guy like Bud Dupree. All, I mean, you got three of your four linebackers that are new. You got new in the people in the secondary. I mean, it was like watching a completely different defense. But what I thought they did better in the second half, they did two things. You know, they, they focused on throwing the football in the middle of the field, which they're very effective. And when they needed to end the game, this is where I've talked about the running game being so vital and so critical is they finished the game. I mean, they just mauled the Steelers up front. Um, um, they attacked and then they didn't do a very good job with contain uh, on the perimeter and they finished the game like that. So their, their running game 
is implemented throughout the with their team it is deployed to help them win a championship that's where you need a running game you know you need that phase of it especially when you want to finish a game like that but i thought in the second half they did a really good job of taking advantage of the size of the Steelers now. They're just not as big as they once were. They have tremendous speed, but they're just not as big as they were in the box. Arthur, curious your thoughts on the adjustments as well, and also, you know, more on what Merrill said in terms of just time of possession, the Steelers' offense not being able to do much, and, you know, the defense getting tired as the game goes on. Yeah, without a doubt. Um, when you talk about it being a tell of two halves, Merrill hit it right on the hedge. Uh, right on the head in the first half the defense did a good job of getting off the field they generated turnovers ultimately they they played at a very high level and in terms of the bills rushing attack they're a pass first team just like we are but they do effectively run the ball and they do it very well situationally we saw some of the short yard stuff as well but in that second half it just looked like the defense for the Steelers, man, they started to become a little bit overwhelmed and, wor uh, and worn down. You talk about some of the smaller guys on the inside, uh, a guy like Marcus Allen playing predominantly inside backer, who we know is a former safety by trade. So you did see some of that. And then the other thing that stood out to me was I thought that the Bills did a good job in the second half of picking up the blitz and, and ultimately allowing Josh more time in the pocket, the, allowing him more time to extend plays was in that first half. I thought the Steelers did a really good job of just rattling him and making him feel uncomfortable. We saw Cam Hayward have a big play that led to an interception. I thought that to me was the biggest difference, though, in that second half. Labs definitely not complimentary football, as Moats is alluding to there, getting some turnovers in the first half. The offense not able to put the points on the board, but also like the offense, injuries kind of mounting for the Steelers defense. We know they are without a few key starters for the rest of the season, but even Alex Highsmith, we saw him going in and out with what appeared to be an ankle injury. So where do you stand on that? Yeah, um, you know, the, the thing with me, Missy, about Buffalo is that's a very, very good team. And I think that that should be understood first this isn't like playing the the ravens when their roster was ravaged ravaged by covid you know we're playing the cowboys or some of those teams jacksonville some of those teams that the steelers played during that one stretch of their schedule buffalo is very very good i kind of believe that buffalo is the best team on the steelers schedule and where i really saw a mismatch in the bill's favor was stefan diggs uh, he is a real number one wide receiver in the NFL. I know a lot of teams like to talk about having a number one wide receiver. It's kind of like them talking about having a franchise quarterback. You can say that, but the the reality is uh, there aren't that really aren't that many true ones of those who deserve that designation in the league. Stephon Diggs is a guy who deserves the designation of number one wide receiver. So you're from the Steelers standpoint, you're playing against him and Josh Allen, great quarterback with a great arm without Joe Hayden. Okay. And then as Arthur mentioned, you weren't getting the complimentary play. So Buffalo was not really under that much pressure in the second half. Once they scored those two touchdowns to take a 23 to seven lead, the Steelers weren't scoring. So Buffalo could afford, you know, to punt if they had to. They didn't have to take a lot of chances because they weren't having to match the Steelers on the scoreboard. And that's really a big help, I believe, uh, for an offense in general and a quarterback in particular. All right, very quickly, I want to get your final thoughts here from everyone. If you are Coach Tomlin, what is your message to the team this week as they hope to uh, rebound against the Cincinnati Bengals on Monday night? Merrill? Well, my first thing in any situation like this, this is what I love about sports, the things it teaches you. Um, anybody who's ever had success in life, the first thing they do is uh, self-reflect. And that's the thing I do is uh, in, a, in a head coaching position, I'd ask everybody to self-reflect. You know, what is it that you need to do better, you can do better, make that our priority first. Then we're going to make our corrections, um, we're going to create a plan, and we're going to take action when we go we line up again, whether it's a Sunday night or Monday night. If we start there, we do that, we're going to have a much better chance versus pointing fingers, casting blame, and making excuses. That is one nothing for people. That is a destructive, poisonous locker room. So that's what I would establish right off the bat with everybody. Arthur? For me, if I'm Coach Tomlin, it's simple. I'm asking the players to write down two things. One is seeking comfort. The other is finding a solution. 
and circle which one you're going to go about. Because at this point in the season, when you drop two in a row, it's going to be easy to point the finger like Merrill said. It's going to be easy to say, well, we had three games in 12 days. It's going to be easy to talk about the injuries. But are any of those things going to help you going forward? Are any of those things going to equate to productivity in the running game, productivity in all three phases? No. So if you're choosing to find a solution, well, now we're all going to have our hands in the pile and we're going to say, okay, let's self-reflect. Let's figure out the things that we've done well and what have we struggled with. And now let's figure out the different ways to implement a, a successful plan going forward. But it's going to start with you just deciding and only deciding once. You don't have time to flip-flop with this thing. You can't seek comfort on Monday and now all of a sudden on Wednesday you want to get after it. You have to decide once and go with that for the rest of the year. All right, Labs, what about you? Well, I agree with uh, with both Merrill and Arthur on, on what they said. I would just add to this. Um, I would also ask uh, the, the in, a lot of the individual players to give an honest assessment of uh, how they are performing and whether they are doing uh, enough to help the team win. One of the things Mike Tomlin said uh, to me in an interview I did with him for his uh, pregame radio show was that you know, sometimes players think the way they support the next man up, whoever that might be, is pat him on the back and give him an attaboy. But the way you need to support those guys is to kick butt around them. And I don't think we saw enough of that against Buffalo. And I think that the guys who f came up short in that area need to look at themselves in the mirror and accept the fact that they came up short in that area and then commit themselves to doing better starting in Cincinnati Monday night. All right, a little motivational Monday for you here on the Extra Point. Thanks, you guys, so much for joining me here today. We'll do it again next week. That's going to do it for the Extra Point presented by Microsoft Surface. Have a great Monday, everybody. What's up, Steelers Nation? It's James Washington. Thanks for watching the video. Make sure to like and comment below. And don't forget to subscribe to the Steelers official YouTube channel. Thanks again, and here we go.